Hello and welcome to XA Score. My name is Brad McCaslin and I appreciate you uh, stopping to take some time to, to listen to this. Last night I had the opportunity to meet with a couple of great men and talk about culture, team culture. Uh, both are, are head football coaches and are responsible for making an impact in student athletes' lives. And uh, I can tell you after the conversation they're doing it at, at a very high level. Um, I commend both for their processes. Um, that being said, the, the conversation after after my comments here um, will we'll take you through a lot of different things relative to, you know, how to how to define it, how to uh, measure, how to um, understand it, and then how to build a uh, strong team culture. It was an interesting conversation. Um, Coach Arini played for Coach Keen at uh, Illinois College, so the, the the dialogue and the dynamic of their experience was was very interesting. So. Um, XA Score is, is proud to be a part of that, and uh, if you enjoy this this conversation and you have an interest to learning more about what XA Score is doing, please you know reach out to us. You can find us on on uh, social media through Twitter and and uh, and our website as well, xascore.coach, um, and, and and find out a little bit more about what we're doing. We're trying to make an impact that makes sense in the world of coaching, and uh, we're doing that from. Um, many, many years of experience, understanding what it's like to be, uh, you know, boots on the ground with that. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our conversation last night. I hope you enjoy it and uh, love to know if you're interested in learning more about what we can do for you. Thanks so much. Yeah, we're on. So I want to I want to say thank you and hello and welcome to our coaches conversation that we're having this evening. I appreciate uh, those of you that are joining us, whether that's, uh, I know some are on Zoom and some are watching through the live stream on Facebook. We appreciate that. Uh, there's going to be some uh, potentially watching this also as a recording. All of that is uh, is appreciated. So uh, my name is Brad McCaslin and, and I'm hosting uh, this webinar uh, to be a regular event once a month uh, here throughout the spring. I'm doing so on behalf of, of XA Score, which just quickly is proud to be part of, of this community um, and this conversation. You know, uh, my, my role in XA Score uh, in, in, in these events that we're trying to do is just to continue to make an impact in the profession that I've been a part of since 1990. Um, you know, and all the programs that I've worked with and coached with over the years, uh, you know, I've consistently looked for opportunities to operate more efficiently, you know, working smarter. Uh, to make better impact in the program or trying to do my job better as a coach uh, to help push student athletes. And, you know, one thing that I was told, <clears throat> I was a wise coach once said to me, you know, he asked, he, he asked himself of this and then it became something that stayed with me. He just said, you know, when I'm in a rut or when I'm in a situation where I'm trying to be better, I asked myself, what would a better coach do? You know, and that, that, that comment has been something that I've, I've used to my benefit, you know, um, when dealing with situations, when dealing with, uh, you know, uh, difficulties, challenges, and, and honestly, too, when dealing with good times and good situations, when things are going your way, you know, at that moment, still, what would a better coach do? And so, you know, as, as that connects to XA score, or my involvement with, with that, it's just an extension of it. You know, with my background in coaching, um, you know, we, we understand the challenges that coaches face, you know, specifically the the need of getting accurate data, um, the benefit of that being delivered in real time, uh, you know, potentially to your to your fingertips. Um, you know, we're providing uh, unique data and relating it to current, uh, you know, current decisions, previous decisions, all in the hopes of making uh, better decisions going forward. Coaches having that information to make better decisions, and you know, and, and that, what's the what's the net impact on that? That's on the student athletes and obviously the success of a program. So. Um, you know, in addition, it's we're developing a, a real time system for athletes, student athletes to better understand where they truly stand right now at all times, both on and off the field. And, you know, I've been saying this for a while that it's when you know that where you truly stand is the that's the first step in being able to redesign your best. And that's the you know, that's the mission at XA score. So um, but that being said, that's not why we're here primarily to have the you know, this time with everyone. We're here to. Uh, talk to a couple coaches and talk about the nature of, of something I think is really important. It's on a lot of people's minds. Um, it should be on everybody's minds uh, throughout the course of the year. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something I think we all wonder as coaches, if we're doing well enough, it's, it's something that's difficult to define. It's, it's even harder to measure, uh, but, but it becomes a very key point 
to our success or our key aspect to our success. Without this in the right, um, you know, in the right form, then, then our success is not, not very likely. So we're talking about team culture and um, it's hard to, it's hard to understand, or I should say this, it's, it's not hard to understand that strong team culture is at the heart of any successful season. But then as each season turns over, uh, comes a new team and an evolving culture and new challenges. And even though you're on your A game in one situation, the next year makes you reevaluate how to uh, to reestablish your footing. So tonight we're going to talk through those ideas in a unique format. Two current head football coaches that I'm introduced here in a second. Uh, one played for the other in college, which should make for some inter interesting dialogue uh, as we as we talk about how that their two paths have evolved and yet still stay connected in some way. So. Um, so let's get started. You know, introductions. Uh, I've known Coach Keen for a significant number of years. Uh, the, there's some gray in the two of us that might uh, suggest some age, but we don't need to. We don't need to dwell on that. Um, it's been said, I think, that uh, some of the best friendships start adversarial. You know, start in challenge or conflict. And while that may not be exactly the case in ours. Uh, we certainly were bitter rivals in our crosstown junior high uh, days. I can promise you that. So if that gives you any perspective on, on how long we've known each other. Um, since that time, though, we've gone on and worked together at a couple different uh, programs, football programs. And it was personally exciting to me uh, to see him go back home to his alma mater. You can see the picture in behind him, uh, you know, at, at WashU taking over for another great in the profession, uh, Coach Larry Kimbaum. Um, you know, this was supposed to be Coach Keen's first year back at WashU, uh, which has been altered, as we all, you know, we know and understand. Uh, but that said, uh, I'd like to welcome him to our conversation. So, Coach Keen, how are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate this, uh, this opportunity, Brad. This is, um, you know, we've known each other for a long time, and we've had a lot of discussions about uh, philosophy with football programs and, and different things of that nature and cultures of, within a football program. And those have been interesting discussions, particularly when we've been associated with the same the same football program and share ideas with with what we're experiencing personally. Uh, and I think this is going to be an awesome opportunity just to visit with, you know, one of my former players and Joe Hereni, who's uh, a very successful head football coach at the high school level right now. And, uh, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of, of opportunity to talk to Joe uh, you know, about his feelings with the culture we had in our football program at Illinois College and what he experienced and what he's been able to take uh, take forward in his career. So really looking forward to this opportunity. Agreed. And so, you know, with that said, um, yeah, you know, take a moment here to introduce Joe and Coach Harini is, uh, is currently third season um, head coach at Downers Grove. Uh, previously was a head coach at Island Park here in Illinois as well. Um, but back home, uh, right, back home in, in the in the area where it was, uh, I was a state champion at Downers Grove South. And then as we alluded to before, Played for Coach Keen at Illinois College uh, back in 2003 was the first season. So, Coach, welcome. How are you? Good, good. Thanks so much for having me. I, uh, I echo all the things you guys are saying about, you know, one of the great things about our profession is um, the sharing nature of coaches and how, you know, for, for, the, for the mass majority of, uh, of football coaches, we were more than willing to share ideas and, you know, share things that have worked for us or not worked for us. And, I'm um, looking forward to the conversation, and it's good to see Coach Keen, and um, good to meet you virtually, Brad. So uh, excited to, to get it going. Absolutely. So I, I'd like to, to start just a little bit because, you know, not everybody that's joining us is from, you know, is from Illinois or, or knows what's going on in Division Three football right now. But just what, what's, it, what's going on at WashU with football right now? What's this spring look like for you guys? Well, it's a very different spring. You know, we're we're like a lot of Division three programs right now, hoping to have a little bit of a semblance of a spring season. And so we are uh, potentially starting some games in late March and, and going into April that would be a conference uh, season for us or schedule for us. We play in the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. So we've got to wait, wait a little bit until the weather uh, gets nice uh, up north, uh, nice enough to play a little bit. Um, so in the meantime, we're practicing. And, and so I think it's, you know, a very different um, experience in Division Three right now. You know, typically we'd be in the midst of a, a eight week strength conditioning cycle in which you would, um, you know, probably not be around your coaches as much, depending on the situation, uh, because we're not in the weight room with our guys. We have a strength conditioning coach that handles that. And, and that's one of the unique things about Division Three is that accountability and, and the culture that has to be created where, 
you know, people have to be uh, very accountable if you're going to have a successful program. So now I get to be around our players, you know, almost on a daily basis as we go through this process and in trying to get them ready to play. So as soon as we get some snow to melt off on our field, uh, you know, we'll get back out there and, and uh, you know, get to working on the skills of football and, and continue to develop our guys, uh, you know, from a physical standpoint. You know, when I think about, uh, you know, coaches in general, the various stops that they're, they're at in their career, and, and, and you've had a, a few to get to this point, what's, what's one of those stops along the way for you or coaching moments along the way for you that is why you're now the head football coach at WashU or tied to why you're at WashU? Well, there's probably a lot of reasons, I mean, mainly because I chose to attend Washington University in the first place back in 1990 and, and play for Larry Kimbaum, who, who spent 31 years here as the, the head football coach. So I had a wonderful experience, you know, playing, playing college football uh, at WashU and spent eight years here as an assistant coach and, uh, you know, moved on to become a head coach for the first time at age 30 uh, at Illinois College uh, back in 2003. So, um, you know, from there, I've, I heard somebody say at one time, it, I've tried to hit the cycle in coaching. I've tried to, tried to coach at every, every different level. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've, I've spent time at two different Division II programs and at an FBS Division I program at Eastern Michigan. And, and now I'm, you know, fortunate enough to be back at, at my alma mater. I've been a head coach at two other institutions. So, I, you know, I knew I wanted to be a head coach again as I made the move to, uh, to Eastern Michigan University. And it's something I talked quite a bit of, uh, to Chris Creighton, our head coach there about. And uh, when the opportunity presented itself at, at WashU, uh, it was just something that, you know, I just felt like was the right place for me. It's the right time in my career to come back here and, and um, you know, very much looking forward to the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Coach, uh, Coach Rennie, like, talk to us a little bit about uh, the state of Illinois high school football and what's going on at, uh, at, at North right now in your program. Yeah, you know, um, obviously it was, it was an interesting fall not having the ability to, you know, have our seasons. But um, with, uh, with our, w the way things have gone, we're excited about, you know, the, the upcoming season. We're going to get six games here in the spring. Um, first day of practice is March 3rd. Um, we've had a few contact days or, you know, non-contact practices, essentially, um, you know, uh, through through our field house and some stuff like that. Um, but our kids are motivated. They're super excited. Um, you know, I think I think our kids have realized, you know, how much how much the sport means to them. Um, and, you know, being without it for so long, I think, has you know, motivated our kids even more. So, um, yeah, we're excited. Um, same thing with Coach Keen. We're hoping that that snow melts. Um, even after this past weekend's big one, um, but uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pray for some sun. So that's the, that's the goal. We're gonna need a lot of it. I don't know yeah, if we're gonna need a lot uh, of it. Yeah, I, I, I might have my mom go out there with a hair dryer. <laughs> we're gonna have to be creative, I think. So, uh, uh, but I'm 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 pulling for it. So I've got two that are playing high school football up here in Illinois, and so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm excited for for that to to get going. So. Um, let's get, let's get into some of the, the culture conversation here a little bit. So, um, I'll ask each of you, but coach Keen, you know, what, 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 just, just to kick it off, how do you define your program's culture and in, in what you're looking for? Yeah. You know, culture is an interesting word and I, I've had a lot of discussions in the off season. I think one of the, one of the great things about, uh, dealing with COVID is we've had a lot of time to spend, um, spend time in clinics, uh, visit with other coaches and explore different topics and eventually run out of the X's and O's to watch. And I'm not going to turn to the triple option. So I've, I've run out of different RPOs to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you, you know, I think one of the more interesting things is to hear people talk about their culture and how they develop their program from a head coaching standpoint. Uh, I can't get enough of that stuff right now. I think if you talk to older coaches, they would tell you culture wasn't a word that was talked about a whole lot. Mm -hmm back when it was just that was part of coaching I've heard Larry Kimbaum say that quite a bit in our program at Wash U um, so you know I look at culture as what I want my program to be when when our coaches are not around right it's it's what our players believe in it's what we as coaches preach and, um, and I think it's important that that as a coach you emphasize what is important to you but it also has to be important to the players, right? They have to have a buy-in. I think it has to be some simple ideas that they can sink their teeth into and, 
and they know uh, what they have to work towards and, and maybe how they can measure uh, that culture as, as they get going in the process. So, you know, for us at, at Washington University, and I've, I've, again, I've had two other programs that I've been in charge of, so I've, I've had an opportunity to kind of live these things and, and decide what's important to me. Probably made some mistakes along the way and emphasized some things that maybe we shouldn't have emphasized or maybe had too much in it. And so I've tried to simplify these things as much as possible, but we really try and preach, you know, the fact that attitude is everything. I'm, I'm really uh, fortunate to take over a program here at WashU that uh, is built on a foundation of positive mental attitude, right? And that's something I brought to, to Illinois College and my time at Minnesota State University, Mankato. Uh, that's, that's been a really important aspect of it. I, I truly do believe that attitude is everything and it can be pervasive across your entire life, your existence to help you from an athletic standpoint and from an academic standpoint and certainly to make you a better person. And so that's what we try and, you know, live our lives by and, and uh, certainly preach within the program. The second aspect that, that's important to me as a head football coach here at Wash U is, is toughness, right? And, and to understand that physical toughness is a, is a huge part of football, right? But we've also got to emphasize mental toughness with our players. And I think the area that's probably overlooked most is emotional toughness or, or the ability to overcome any setbacks that, uh, that you encounter because sooner or later, we're all going to lose a football game, right? Or, or something negative is going to happen. And how are we going to respond to that? I think that's a really important, important aspect of what we do. And then the last part for us is, is a focus on the process. And this is probably something that, uh, you know, I've gotten to later in my life. And, and probably because of the influence, if you look at, you know, how successful Nick Saban is in, in college football right now and how, how they go about things, I'm just enamored by the ability to focus on how you do things on a daily basis and, and that leading to success if, if you're doing those things right. And um, I think, you know, my time at Minnesota State University, that became a really powerful thing for me uh, in the two years I spent as a head coach there and had an awful lot of success with some great kids. And, and you know, I made a decision that if I was ever able to become a head football coach again, it would certainly be a, a huge part of what we try and do from a culture standpoint. Uh, within our program. So those, those three ideas, I think, are the foundation of what we do as a culture. That's uh, is very well said. I'd like to, to turn it to Coach Harini and, uh, and get your take on, on your, you know, defining your, your, your program's culture and, you know, what, what, you, what your expectations are in that same way. Yeah, um, I mean, I think Coach Keen hit it right on the head. Um, you know, I think a, a big part of what defines us is, um, the representation of, of what we are um, as a Donners North football program, as a Donners North football player. Um, when we go out in the community, you know, what we want the word on the street to be is that's a Donners Grove North football player. He's a man of integrity. Um, he does things the right way. Um, and, you know, he, he follows, you know, the, the code that the coaches and, and the program stand for. Um, we took, uh, I read a book, um, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and, um, it's made an impression on me. Um, and certainly, um, you know, he, he's talking about stuff during wartime and things like that. But I think um, his motto of extreme ownership on, on controlling everything that you can. Um, I heard a, a, a long time ago um, from my high school football coach that you need to control the controllable. Um, and I think your response to whatever is going on in, in your life or your situation is, um, you know, you got to be able to control the controllable and and how you respond to a certain thing. So um, the, the, the extreme ownership motto is kind of applying to, you know, all of our aspects in terms of our, um, in terms of our academics, in terms of our, you know, team unity and discipline. Um, and, you know, I think the, the other kind of pillars that we stand for is that accountability piece um, and echoing kind of what you said about your, you know, program is, um, you know, knowing what your kids are doing and, and knowing that they're going to be accountable, you know, not just on the football field on fourth and one, but to their families, to their, you know, to their future spouses um, and, and that they're going to be a dependable person. Um, you know, I think there's so many awesome life lessons that are, are beyond football um, that, that can go along with being a part of a football program. So um, that accountability and that character within that extreme ownership model is kind of the things that we talk about the most. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar <clears throat> with the, uh, 
with, with Jocko's writings on that. And, and the interesting thing between the two of you, just, just what connects is the kind of that power of, you know, I've heard Coach Keen talk about controlling what you can is for, for many years and how that leads from an attitude standpoint and having a positive attitude and then controlling the controllable from your perspective. The one connection to that are those are the two things you decide. And when you have the ability to decide <clears throat> as, you know, as an individual, that's, that's your, that's your power, right? <clears throat> So don't give it up, you know, can, you know, decide to, to be, to own it, to, to, to take ownership of your situation, decide to have a great attitude. And, uh, you know, and those two things are, I think are very powerful. So, um, you know, for, for each of you two guys, uh, we, as we've already mentioned, this is not your first head coaching role. You know, you are, you're doing this again, you know, so uh, I'll ask you, uh, Coach Arini, like, you know, your, your perspective has got to be different, Mac, you know, because of the experience you previously had as a head coach. So, you know, what was, what was one of the first things you did differently as you were introducing your culture to, you know, to Downers Grove, Downers Grove North? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think uh, as any coach, you know, makes that transition from player um, to position coach and then position coach to coordinator to head coach to, or coordinator to head coach, you, you know, you realize some of the things that you did along the way that um, you could have done a better job of. Um, I think one thing that um, I did that was different was I think at first at, at my first stop at Highland Park, I, I think I tried to do everything myself um, and because I didn't have a whole lot of connections in the area and my staff at Highland Park was awesome. Um, but I think I tried to, because I was so motivated and so excited about the new opportunity, I knew that I could count on myself um, to, to implement it. Um, but I think when I got to Downers, you know, while I, I didn't go to the school, I had some connections with some of the staff members and I felt, you know, I felt more comfortable having done it before to give up some of that, you know, responsibility and power while still being, you know, overseeing it and stuff like that is to, is to selling it to the coaches first. So that way it can filter out into, you know, into your team a little bit more. Um, so I would say that's, you know, one difference that, that I probably, probably did. Uh, that makes great sense. Yeah. Coach Keen, how about you? You know, it's, it's an interesting question and it's, you know, it's hard for me because this is such a different year, right? I mean, I, I was head coach, uh, probably named the head coach a little over a year ago at, at Washington University and uh, had an opportunity to have a, a one team meeting uh, with our guys to set a tone and talk about things that are important to me. I think that's an important, important part of the process is, is your players seeing your passion for the things that are important to you and, and you're defining that a little bit. But I also think that some of that stuff's got to come across in your daily interactions with those players as well. It's going to be more than just that meeting. And that's the part I feel awful about is that, you know, we had an eight week strength conditioning cycle last year, again, at division three, I'm not in the weight room with those guys on a daily basis. I would interact with them maybe as they walk down the hallway to the weight room and, and see them on campus and, I had individual meetings with all the players, so we got another chance to get to know one and one another. But they had not seen me coach a practice yet. And so it was interesting this fall, although we didn't play football games, we had workouts, right? We don't have pads on and we didn't have contact and we had to do things differently because of COVID. Um, but the players got to, got to see what was important to me uh, by the way that I coached the game and coached a drill and, and emphasized things. And, um, you know, I, th I think that's an important part of the process. I, I think the thing maybe I've done differently over the years, you know, from my time at Illinois College to my time at Minnesota State and now at, now at WashU is uh, to not be afraid to try new things uh, that are going to help our program. So it kind of ties into what, what Joe mentioned, just, you know, using other voices in your, your program. I think one thing that's been really powerful for me is to be able to use a uh, a team chaplain to be able to use a, a mental training coach. You know, we've had a sports psychologist, uh, Dr. Cinder Kampoff, who worked with our team at, uh, at Minnesota State. And I use her services here at, at WashU with our players uh, to be able to, to train our guys mentally. I think it's important to have other voices that are emphasizing similar themes as you, maybe doing it in a different way uh, can be very powerful. And, and so I've probably gotten better over the years at, at, at that type of thing, turning things loose a little bit, being able to communicate with other people and, and share my view of it and having them, um, you know, bring that message to, to players as well. 
you know, that when Coach Keen, when you, uh, uh, you know, we've all heard it, like when you take over a new program, you know, it's time to change the culture, right? But you're taking over a program there at WashU under the circumstances you just mentioned, you know, difficulty with COVID. You're also taking over a program that that fed your 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 culture to a certain extent, taking over for Coach Kimball, you know, and 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 you know that that's a different type of type of circumstance. But you're also you're not Coach K, you know. So so what was that like for you, or how is that going at, at this time? Well, I mean, I, it, it would come out in the interview process when I was looking at this job. I mean, people would would constantly ask how I was going to be different than than Larry Kimball and trying to figure out the the differences that I worked for, for coach K for, for eight years. I played for him for four years. He, he had a tremendous impact on me as a person and certainly me as a coach. Uh, I feel like I do a lot of things very in, in a similar way to, to Larry Kimbaum. Um, but you know, the same light, I, I am Aaron Keen. I'm, I'm a different person. Uh, I, you know, I, I can be a little bit different. And I think the most important part for me is that I've got to be myself in leading this football program there are certain aspects of, of this program that I would certainly not change, right? I am so fortunate to take over a program that had a really strong culture. And as I said, one that was kind of built on a foundation of, of positive mental attitude, right? And when I say that, it's not just something that Coach K said for 31 years at Washington University. If you listen to any alum uh, who played for Coach K talk about their experience at this place, they talk about what an impact positive mental attitude and controlling the controllables and everything that goes into it had in their lives. And, and that's a cool thing. I don't want to change that for a minute. Now, Hey, I'm very fortunate. And I believe in those things as well. Right. So it's, it's easy for me to preach those things. And, and I understand exactly what the players have been through and what they've been taught and, and how I can relate to that. So, Hey, I'm going to continue to emphasize the things that our players feel like are great parts of our program. That was you know, one of the cool things is sitting down with those guys individually and talking to them about what the best things about WashU football uh, were. And, and then we're going to continue to emphasize those things. It's the same experience that I had uh, as a student athlete there. And then also understanding that, hey, I got to be myself in meetings. I have to be myself in practice. I have to be myself in, in workouts uh, so that the players start to get to know what maybe some of the differences are going to be in how I emphasize things or go about uh, go about things in, in leading this program. So taking you away from your WashU experiences, and you've touched on this a little bit, Minnesota State, um, you know, coach or, or Cinder Camp off some of her assistants. But aside from that, what, what's one of the other things that you pulled from your other stops or experiences that you're trying to replicate or, or, or build upon, I should say, uh, there at WashU? Well, I mean, I, if I think back to my time at Illinois College and, and Joe, I'm hoping you can relate to some of this, this <clears> stuff. Like when I think about the people I was around there, I, I think about how much those kids that I got an opportunity to coach love football. Right? I, I don't know if I've been around a, a group that felt that way. And I, hey, if you look at the number of football coaches who are in the state of Illinois who graduated from Illinois College and are former Blue Boys, uh, it's amazing. And I think you know, there's just a tremendous amount of passion for the sport and, and for that institution there. And that, that came across and it's something that, you know, I learned a lot from that experience and certainly want to take that to any place that I've uh, been. I think the other part is the amount of fun that those kids had playing football, right? It's, it's a huge philosophical thing for me as I look at what any program I'm going to be a part of, you know, one of our goals is to make sure we're having fun playing football, right? I heard Sean Lewis at Kent State say this during the, the offseason that, you know, when he went next door and knocked on the door to his, um, his neighbor to, to ask him to come out uh, with him and play football rather than work football. That, that's, a, that's a pretty powerful thing, right, to think about this is supposed to be a game and it's supposed to be fun and we've got to keep it that way as coaches. And, you know, I learned a lot about that, at, you know, my time at Illinois College. We weren't always successful, right? We lost our share of games, but I I think those kids had a whole lot of fun playing football and, and took that passion with them well beyond their years at that institution. And then I think of, you know, if my time at, at Minnesota state, you know, we, we had some really tough kids, right. And, and I learned a lot about what it means to be tough 
right? It, you certainly have to be physically tough to play in 20 degree weather in November when you're playing in the playoffs in, in Minnesota. But there's also a lot of the mental toughness and emotional toughness that I learned from those guys uh, and wanted to incorporate into any program that I get an opportunity to lead again. So those are certainly some great things that I've learned from our players over the years. Well, I don't have a, uh, I never coached uh, at uh, Illinois College. I didn't play there. I didn't have that experience. I do have a Blue Boy football t-shirt from working a camp one fine summer uh, back in, in, the, in the early 2000s. I, I know that. So A Jacksonville summer, you can't beat it. <laughs> There's no question. No question. So, uh, you know, the coach for many, I'm, I'm curious about this. You know, we, we talk, um, we all know as coaches that the game stays with you for life. I've always said it marks you for life. I mean, there's just things that, that, uh, that you just don't shake off and it's, you know, it's deeper than a tattoo even. You're right. So, right. um, you know, but what, you know, from your experience as a, as a, as a player, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking to you, putting it down towards your coach or your, your, your players, but as a player, what stayed with you, uh, whether that connects with coach Keen or not, that's not what I'm looking for, but sure. You know, from your experience. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's kind of funny. Coach Keen intro that with the, with the blue boys, um, in terms of fun and passion for, for the game. Um, when I chose to go to Illinois college, I, the, the recruiting trip was a good time. I came there with high school, um, teammates and, and we went there together. Um, and I, as we talked at the beginning, I was the only one that stuck it out. Um, and I think the thing that sticks with me the most about my playing time is, is those relationships, both with the, the coaching staff, um, you know, one thing I wrote down in some notes when, when we got the questions ahead of time was um, one thing that made a big impression on me uh, when Coach Keen got hired was, um, and now I, you know, I did it as when I took over, you know, as a head coach at both places, um, was trying to meet with every single kid individually um, when he got the job. And I remember that meaning something to me. Um, and, you know, some coaches might be like, well, yeah, that's what you do. Um, but that's not what the culture was there at the time. Um, and I appreciated it. And um, that kind of stuck with me about, you know, showing kids that you care that you're going to coach and um, you know, the kids got to know that you care about them before, you know, you can coach them in a certain way. So um, I think the relationship piece of, of both buddies that I played with that now, you know, have become high school coaches and college coaches like coach Keen has said. Um, but, you know, it, like you said, they, it, those those things are 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 special to me um you know i i try to reach out to an ic buddy every day uh via text or something like that i try to you know try to hit them hit them around so i just keep that you know that good feeling going so um that relationship piece would be what i would say you know it's it's interesting to kind of hear you both say it a little bit differently but similar you know the when you think about you know, what you're, when you sit down and meet with those, those individuals, you're, you're, you're making that connection, but you're doing it with an open mind. You're, you're, you're putting yourself out there to learn, you know, you're walking into the room saying, what am I going to learn from this situation? Same thing, coach Keen talking about Minnesota state and learning from them, what, what their perspective or version of toughness is and how that impacted. And, you know, a lot of coaches are, are always forward facing and always, you know, they're, they're leading and, and, and directing and guiding. And, and sometimes they're a little closed off to, to receiving, you know, and uh, it's interesting to hear. It's also refreshing to hear both of you kind of talk about that. So, um, you know, coach or if, when you think about now, now your players, okay. You know, what are you marking them with? What are they going to leave your, your program with, uh, you know, 20 years from now, you're going to get a note or whatever a version of a note is. It's not going to be a text, <laughs> but whatever that is. Like, right. what are you going to read on your forearm from one of your players in 20 years? You know, I think, my, my hope is that um, they're, they're going to talk about some of the things that, that Coach Keen talked about is, is those relationships um, and that not only did we have success on the field, um, but they were taught life lessons through the game of football, um, you know, through being held accountable, um, through, you know, all the investments that kids make. I mean, football is so special that we get such a limited number of games that the practices – have to matter you know they they just have to um and, and for me it's the most fun about football in making those investments um and showing them that you know anything worth worth anything in life is hard work 
Um, so I hope that's that's the message I read on my forearm, or you know maybe it'll be sent to my retinas or, or something like that. We'll see. Agreed. Well, we'll we'll be curious. So um, th- let me ask you this, Coach. You know, you know when you were you know, you, the experiences you had as a player, you know, we don't always see, you know, we don't always see the light, right? You know, uh, we sure. don't know what's why this is or this, so on and so forth. But, you know, when you first became a head coach, what was one of those first like, kind of aha moments that, yeah, now I, I get it. I understand why Coach Keen was saying this or, or you know, when you, you guys were talking about another former coach, you know, I, for, I forget his name off the top of my head. But I mean, some of those things, what, what was that first aha moment now as a coach seeing it from a different perspective? I think and I heard it from the guy I worked for at, uh, at St. Francis, who actually works for, for us now at North as my head freshman coach. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Um, you know, as a, as a, even as an assistant coach, you have no idea the amount of stuff that a head coach at a high school level, at a college level, has to deal with. Um, the number of hats that you have to wear, um, and I'm sure it's just increased as time has gone on, um, you know, it's, it's cool to hear Coach Keen talk about that emotional toughness. Um, you know, I think in our society um, and, you know, prior football experience, maybe that wasn't valued as much. Um, it was a, a kind of a grin and bear it type mentality. Um, and I think, you know, as coaches, we have to be aware of, you know, we don't know a kid's whole story. You know, what they're bringing to the table, we see, but there's a, a whole nother story to, you know, kid A and kid B. Um, that they're bringing to the table. So um, I think that's, that's something that, uh, you know, I would, I, I think about, you know, that type of thing. So coach Keen, you, you were, you had mentioned earlier sometime with uh, Cinder Kampoff and uh, both at Minnesota state and now at Wash U. And, and I remember I, 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 I posted your, your interview from a few years back that you did with her. And I remember when you did that then and, and listened to it again and, and, uh, uh, you know, you were talking a little bit about there were some things that go on in a program that at one point in your career thought were kind of gimmicky, you know, but you started to see that different from the perspective of, uh, you know, from a performance coach, you know, from someone who is looking at it from a different perspective. Give us some example, um, you know, about how that connects to your culture today, things that that you learned in that process. Yeah, so I can think of a, a you know, a specific example. Um, there were. <laughs> coach named Frosty Westring, I believe was the name, uh, at Pacific Lutheran out in Washington, who was kind of a legendary NAI Division Three coach, small college. His big thing was to make the big time where you're, where you're at. Yeah. And he used to talk about having a, a, a flushable toilet on the sideline, a little flushable toilet to, to be able to flush mistakes, right? And I remember reading the book and thinking it was kind of gimmicky. And, you know, I, I don't know if I could pull that off because I, I really do – feel like you have to believe in the things that you're going to preach to your kids or present to your kids. And so Dr. Kampoff, um, you know, brought the idea of flushing mistakes and, you know, getting past some of our bad plays or, you know, negative things that happen during games. And so she brought a little toilet out to, to a presentation uh, at Minnesota state, you know, a little toilet here that had a Maverick logo on it. She flushed it, it made a noise and, and, <laughs> was kind of a gimmicky thing and I I didn't know how our players would respond to it right I thought it'd be something that maybe we just spent a half hour talking about and it would kind of go away well this toilet ends up on our sideline and <laughs> we had great players at, the, at that institution one of them was Adam Thielen who's you know with the Minnesota Vikings and um, has been a uh, has been a all pro in the NFL and has talked about how learning how to flush those mistakes has made him a better football player. In fact, I can think back to a couple of years ago, he's playing in a uh, NFL playoff game against the saints and fumbles his first carry uh, after a, after a catch turns it over the saints, get points out of it. He ends up catching like 14 passes or whatever it was for 140 yards, including the pass that gets down inside the five that sets up the game winner. Uh, and so the story of the game is all about how he got over this mistake that he made early on. And he talked about flushing the toilet on the sideline at, uh, at a, you know, college football game and and the impact that had on him and his ability to learn how to flush those mistakes and get past it. Well, I mean, I thought it was a gimmick, but it's, it's something that was really powerful for our players. And, And Adam's just an example of one player that it impacted. There was an all American defensive end that it was a huge thing for him. 
you know, to be able to do that and get past mistakes on the sideline. And so I think there's sometimes you listen to coaches talk about things that work for them and you do think they might be a little gimmicky. And that's where I'm, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, I, as I get older, I'm not afraid to, to try some things that might appear to be a little bit more gimmicky because I know that they may have an impact on some of our players and in, in their ability to be better football players and be better people uh, in the process. So, you know, I, I can't say enough about my experience with mental training and the sports psychology side of things. It was something I fell in love with in college and, and rediscover it, rediscovered it in my time at uh, Minnesota state. And I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. But uh, the toilet story, it, it reminds me of one that I won't share, but uh, it was, <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And I wasn't going to be inappropriate, but uh uh, that, let me let me bring you back on campus there at WashU. You know, you, if you think about uh, culture and, and 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 you had said a little bit of trying to understand if you're on track. You know, measuring it. Uh, you know, it's a difficult thing I think for a lot of us to uh, to do. But uh, and it's difficult for you right now with all the things you haven't played a game, haven't been around your guys. It's it that's a challenge. But you're of at WashU and of your of your total experience. Like, you know, how have you gone about tracking? If you're on, if you're on, you know, on pace with your expectations. Well, it's interesting, you know, the time we're in with COVID here and dealing with, with all the restrictions we have, the, the one blessing is that I get to be around the players, uh, you know, for their workouts. And, and so it's a little bit more mandatory, mandatory as opposed to voluntary, which is a huge thing for me uh, in being able to set, set a tone with the culture. And if there's a player that's late for something or, you know, misses a workout or whatever it is, I I certainly get an opportunity to set a tone. And the message that I'm happy to deliver is that, Hey, the, the big thing right now in our culture is that there is an expectation that you need to be here doing the work. And if you're not going to be here, you're going to be late that there's proper communication. I think that's going to be huge for us and pay huge dividends down the road. Uh, because our players will understand that and, and they won't have to have a coach, uh, you know, standing over their shoulders. There's, hey, there's a lot of things going on in a student's life at Washington University, right? These guys are studying some serious subjects uh, from biomedical engineering to uh, finance and economics or, you know, pre-med majors that uh, they're going to go on and do some great things in their lives. And so we realize football is not the number one priority in their lives, uh, but it is important to them. And, and we've got 105 guys working out right now in the off season uh, that I think are finding that it's really important to them to be uh, a part of a special program that has an opportunity to compete for championships. And, and so that's all part of that process. As we talk about what our culture is going to be, you know, I've, I've had a meeting with our players where I've had them discuss maybe 10 words that are pretty powerful. And, and so the words that I brought up earlier with attitude and toughness and process you can tag different words onto that, whatever you kind of think is important in your program. We've had our players discuss those in smaller groups and figure out what's important to them. What do they want to have some backing behind? And then how are we going to measure uh, those words, right? So if attitude is what we're all about, how are we going to measure that in workouts, in practices, in games, to make sure that we're holding ourselves to a standard as a football team with attitude? or with toughness, or focus on the process, whatever it is. And so that hey, was a great exercise for me to hear our players talk about how they want to measure those things. And, and so if you're asking how we're going about measuring it right now, I'm taking those words that, the, that mean something to the players. And, you know, we're figuring out what, what our workouts are going to look like. The way that I put it to them is if I were an outsider and I came to our practice or I came to our games or our weightlifting sessions, and I, didn't, I knew nothing about our program, what would I see that defines our program in that practice or that lifting session or that game? And that's a pretty powerful thing for players to, to think about, right? Because if, if something negative happens, how are they responding to it? Well, that's, that's what people are seeing about our attitude, our positive mental attitude on the, on the field. And, and so that's how we're trying to, trying to kind of measure that. You know, how, what does attitude look like? What does toughness look like? What does our focus on the process look like on a day-to-day, workout-to-workout uh, basis? So, t- what's talk about this? Like, what, you know, positive mental attitude is 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 at the forefront of, of 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 much of your messaging. It's one of your pillars. But what what's the greatest challenge to driving that? Like, what gets in the way of it? 
That's a great question. And, you know, it's, it's interesting as I, as I talk to our players about the strengths of the program, positive mental attitude comes out, you know, 95% of the time when I'm talking to the players. Some of them will mention that one of the weaknesses is when things really get challenging or we're faced with adversity, that some of that positive mental attitude fades away. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me as, as a coach, it's, it's, I think the most challenging thing about having a culture that's defined by positive mental attitude is making sure that it exists in all situations, right? Because it's easy to have a positive mental attitude when things are going really well, right? When we were going to the national semifinals at Minnesota State, it was pretty easy to be positive about, about things. Um, but there were times during that year where we fell down by 14 points with seven minutes left in a game to, to Southwest Minnesota State and our players were the ones that dug us out of that because they had a positive mental attitude. Right. I could see that existed in times of adversity. And that's what I'm interested in finding out about our players here. I think it's such a strong foundation of, of PMA, positive mental attitude, that I'm hoping that I find that even in those times of adversity, that it exists there and it, it helps drive them through those tough times to get to some success. Coach Arini, I've got uh, a question about, um, you know, there's a lot of talk right now, you know, nationally, regionally about the, the impact of COVID on the mental state of our, you know, of students, of athletes, of young people, everyone. I understand that, but but specifically with, with student athletes, you know, I saw a thing that uh, uh, some, some data that was put out by the NCAA that compared you know, the numbers that they track in that area, we're, we're twice, uh, it's a concerning level by twice what it, what it normally is, even at this point where we're maybe coming off of the, the worst of the times, you know, but, and I imagine that that is different in each of your situations, you know, both of your environments are different in that way, but, uh, but from your perspective, Coach Arini, like talk about, you know, what, what, what does that look like in your environment? What, what is that, where, where does that ride with you? Yeah, it's, um, it's certainly a difficult thing. Um, you know, uh, I was talking to a staff member and they're like, I know the kids are having a hard time, but it's hard for me. And I'm like, we're the adults. <laughs> like, right. you know, we've got to be a great example for these guys and, and everybody's had a hard time through it, but, um, we have to remember these are the 15, 16, 17 year old kids who, um, a major source of their identity. If we're just talking about sports and football, um, was taken away mm -hmm. um, and that outlet that they have. And, you know, depending on what they're allowed to do socially, that that social aspect has been taken away. Um, you know, I think it's heightened some kids' anxieties and, um, you know, other things. And um, I think our goal as coaches um, and as a staff and me as a head coach was to maintain that connection as best that we could um, and to continue to be a resource and uh, for our kids and, you know, provide opportunities for them to feel that same bond together, um, even if we couldn't always be together. Um, you know, we went through, like like most high school programs and college programs, we went through different stages of what was allowed with pods of 10, and groups of 25 and whatnot. Um, but even, you know, in November and stuff like that, when things were pretty bad with COVID, um, you know, we did uh, like a, a trivia night over Zoom and, um, you know, anything to, to keep our kids engaged and feeling good about things. Um, and, and certainly it's, it's been tougher, you know, in, with our, our learning style right now, some of us being remote and some of us being in person. So um, it's definitely been challenging, but um, it's nice to see our kids again. And it seems like they've got a, you know, another pep in their step with this, you know, vision of the season coming closer. So um, that, that was, you know, something I thought about all, the whole time. It, you know, I, I certainly, I, I missed the season and, and all those things. And um, I just, anytime I had a conversation, I just kept saying, I feel so bad for these kids because um, they deserve it, and, you know. Yeah, there's no question. And, you know, and, and, and getting back to it helps a lot, right? There's just right. a physical piece that's been missing for a long time. But, you know, is it, is it kind of connects to our conversation, you know, with culture? Let me ask you this, like, you know, when you think of, you know, whether, you know, when you think of culture or you think of team culture, strong culture, those types of, you know, uh, definers of culture, you know, beyond some of the obvious stuff, I mean, how does that impact in, in your world, in the high school student athlete, how does that impact the, the mental health of those individuals, you know, because people are coming, 
you know, there's a lot beyond just what you see. You said that earlier, you know, the individuals are all coming from different perspectives and experiences. Yeah, I think, that, you know, getting our kids to understand um, that we are that team, you know, we're going to spend a lot of time together throughout, you know, our season, but um, to understand that our team is a safe haven for them, you know, it's a place where they can feel, um, you know, that sense of belonging, um, feel a sense of purpose, um, you know, and, and understand that we're all working together towards our same goals, but um, understanding that you can't just count on your buddy to, to make the right read, you know, on a, on a guard, guard read as a linebacker, but you can also count on him to, you know, help you out in a time of need and, um, you know, uncovering those barriers of reaching out for help when you do need it. Um, I, I was very impressed with um, a, a few guys on our team that, you know, wanted to set up a Zoom with me because they were concerned for a few kids. And um, it, it just showed a lot of maturity, you know, on their part. So um, I think we're doing doing the right things in terms of that. But I think, you know, all those things that being a part of a team allows you to feel, um, you know, it, it is so valuable to, to teenagers, whatever sport they're, you know, involved in or activity, obviously. Yeah, it says a lot when your culture, you know, is allowing, uh, you know, uh, a, a couple players to let their guard down and not think about themselves first, right? right. You know, I mean, that's, that speaks volumes about your, your personal culture there, Coach. So at, at Wash U, you know, it's a different dynamic with a college kid, the pressures you talked about, some of the studies and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, how, you know, how is – how is your culture impacting the mental health of your team or not, not of your team of, of some of those individuals? Well, it's interesting, you know, Joe brought up coaches feeling that way as well. And I, I don't discount that. Like I, I feel, you know, some of the strain of that and yeah. uh, the longing for, you know, what we're, we're, what we're used to and what we love. I and mean, the reason I do what I do is I, I love it. I, I, I get to coach a game. Uh, and it keeps me pretty young being around these young people all the time. And then the camaraderie of our coaching staff. And that's probably what's been missing most for me is just the ability to sit in a, in a dark room and watch football and, and, you know, talk some ball a little bit and bond. And, um, you know, we, ha we haven't necessarily had that, um, had that process. So what I found is that every little step along the way, like our first opportunity to get together and have a workout where you had some semblance of norm normal and our players got to see each other, like the emotional lift it gave me as a, as a coach, I can only imagine what it did for, for our players. Right. And that's something they've talked about since that point, you know, we got a chance to, to meet over zoom individually with our players and talk about what the experience was like. Hey, the positive was the workouts that they got to have with their teammates. The negative was that at that point we were not getting into full team workouts. So, the challenge in a university setting is that these guys didn't grow up around each other, right? We've got, you know, a freshman coming in from Downers Grove North who doesn't know anybody from an upperclassman standpoint. And, you know, unless he's working out with those guys in those small pods, um, you know, at the same time, he's not going to get to know those people as well because our people are pretty separate on campus as well, just to, for the health and safety during that process. So, been a very different year very challenging year and, and the more that we can get back to you know joe mentioned it earlier the family atmosphere of a football team hey that's the strength right that's what everybody wants i mean i love my college football playing experience and i loved playing 10 guaranteed games per year we've got a group who didn't get that this fall but i guarantee you what they're going to miss most is the time around their teammates where goofy stuff happens in the locker room or on buses or you know, on trips uh, during fall camp uh, that, you know, we, we've got to find a way to get back to those things so that they get that, that, that sense of family within the, the football program and the bonding and the, the things that they're going to remember for a lifetime. Coach, uh, Coach Rennie, uh, uh, you know, one of the, I mentioned it, this will be the only other time I, I talk about uh, the, the, the system, the XA source system that we're doing, you know, one of the, but one of the key components of it is, 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 is checking people in, you know, and, and part of that is giving some feedback for that because, you know, I feel like one of the, the, the strengths of culture is if you, if you know your team is where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there doing what they're supposed to do, uh, uh, you, you have, you have that, you have a strong culture or that's an element of strong culture. So, 
Um, you know, and, and, and so like when you think of your approach to the discipline of time management, you know, in a high school team, man, that's got to be challenging at times because they're, they're not in full control of their lives, even right. at that point. But, you know, what, what is, you know, how, how do you approach it, you know, from a discipline standpoint, what's working and what concerns you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, and like Coach Keen said, you know, I think this year has been different for everybody. Yeah. And um, one thing I was talking to my staff about is, uh, one guy was like, is it going to practice going to start at three 30 every day? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you tell me, um, we got some kids that are on who are, you know, in person in the afternoon, they were, the other kids were in person in the morning. The other ones are, you know, learning remotely. It's like, uh, uh I don't know. Uh, I hope so. I don't think it will, but, um, you know, I, I think w- what I try to do is, is selling that importance of, you know, this is more than you, um, in terms of that time management thing. Um, while you're representing yourself, you're also representing, you know, our program and your family um, and just getting that, that, that more, it, 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 allowing them to understand it's about more than them. And it's about being accountable to their teammates. Um, you know, I, th- I think um, one thing that, that I've found is, is the, the methods of communication um, by a coach has to, has to be kind of, you know, diverse. You've got to find different ways to get it across. Um, and, and different avenues, um, you know, because not every kid reads his email, you know, there, there's different, you know, things, obviously, that, that you have to do. Um, and, and the control thing is, you know, trying to set them up for those conversations, like this morning, um, you know, we had a workout at, at 6am, and we have to do the whole check check in procedure, and some are coming from different towns, and um, just preparing them in a communication style that I had, you know, prepping them for that conversation with mom and dad. Um, hey, mom, you know, I've got practice at such and such time. So just that whole process of like what, what's to think about um, it, it has been challenging, but I'm um, just kind of preparing kids that way and getting to get that buy-in of it's about more than themselves and um, them making this commitment to being on time and doing things right in the classroom and um, allowing themselves to, you know, have enough time to get to practice and check in, but also get home and, you know, be able to spend time with family, but also take care of their academics as um, it's been challenging, I think, for kids too. Um, the lack of structure that we had up until March of last year is completely gone, especially in our school setting. It is, um, you know, we have we have a schedule, but it's only four periods a day, um, and they they only come for half the day, um, and then they go home because of the lunch thing. So there's a lot of different things that, you know, I think about it this way: like my first semester in Illinois College, where I was like, oh, no one's waking me up. Oh, I've only got two classes. Oh, like you just have this endless time. I mean, I got real good at Tiger Woods golf. I'll tell you that. Um, but the, 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 uh, the, the amount of structure that I think a high school kid needs um, is, is just kind of lacking based on how we have to do, you know, our school process right now. Right. Yeah. Uh, the challenge is, is, is crazy. I, I, I can't, and, and, you know, they say, you know, what does, doesn't kill you makes you stronger, all that kind of stuff right. where, where there's some, there's some benefits through all this that's, that's helping us. But, uh, uh, but it's sure we're going to look back and go, whoo, what a day, what, what a time, you know, um, you know, coach Keen, you know, we're, uh, we talked a little bit about age and uh, you know, we're not the, uh, we're not the youngest, you know, there are some out there that are younger than us and, and hopefully some young coaches. It's typical that on things like this, young coaches are, are listening in and you uh, you know, you've had some, you've had an evolution as a coach. And so if you're speaking to, you know, someone who's trying to follow a path like yours and, 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 and do some of the things that you've been able to accomplish, I mean, what of your mentality is who you are as a coach, you know, would a young coach benefit most from? Uh, well, I, I think um, there, there's three things that I think about. And I'll hopefully remember all three of these as I get going, but uh <laughs> would say is when I was a 30 year old head coach, I was pretty emotional. Right. And I, I still consider myself to, to driven by emotion. Uh, but I'm, I feel like I'm better able to control those emotions in good times and bad uh, and be a little bit more level uh, as I, as I deal with situations and deal with people. Um, you know, when, when you're meeting with individuals or you're coaching the game, right. I, I think that's an important part is to, to, to have a little bit of level uh, emotional uh, stability there. Um, the second thing that I would say is has developed over the years for me is just 
I mentioned it earlier, just being open to new ideas, uh, not being closed off to, to things. And that's, hey, that's X's and O's, that's things from a program and development standpoint, that's how I'm dealing with people, um, relationships, all that stuff. Um, now, I will also say, and the last thing that's important in this is that while I'm open to new ideas, I also feel like over the years, I've gotten a really good feel for what is important to me. And I'm going to stick by those things, right? Those are the, the non-negotiables uh, that, that Brad, you and I used to discuss when we jog, you know, when we were younger. Uh, and Log, yeah. what was important offensively or defensively or in a program. And um, so that's probably the most important thing to me that has developed over the years is if I get challenged by something, if I don't feel like I'm su as successful as I need to be, I'm going to go back to the things that I feel like are really important to me and I'm going to stick to those. Yeah, I think that, you know, knowing who you are and, and sticking to that is, that is important. I mean, you know, I was talking to my, um, he's a freshman, my son today, we're heading to a basketball game and, and, uh, and I told him what we're doing tonight. And I asked him this question. It, it was just kind of, you know, it was an innocent conversation you know, but it got to the point, you know, that even at his age as a freshman football player, he understands when people are being real or authentic or genuine, you know, from a coaching perspective. And that's a turnoff, you know, it, it, you know there's a lot of people trying to be something, you know, and they get away from what, what, you know, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to flub, whatever the case may be, you know, being genuine through those things, I think are, important and you know when you talk about the difference and how these kids are communicating and how you have to communicate and being versatile um you know that that's another thing too is being versatile with with who you are so i i think that's i think that's that's you know knowing who you are being versatile yet but but being able to be consistent with that is what leads to the, you know being genuine and uh and i i, I mean i I salute you for, for, for saying that. I, this is something I, I think the two of you both, it's different in, in your environments again, you know, high school and college, and we've got both listening. So, you know, what do you feel is the right amount of, of I don't know if it, what the term, the best term would be, but content, just think of it as content with regard to culture, development, leadership, but for your age group, okay, you know, for your group, what's the right amount of that? Because I feel like sometimes we, we do want to do more than we should, or, and then sometimes we're failing and we're not meeting them where they need to be. So, you know, for, for you, uh, coach Harini, what, what, what does that look like? What's the right amount? Yeah. Um, I, I was, I was thinking about that question as well. And I, I think what I've, what I've come to is, is a way to weave it in, uh, to your practice until your, you know, your, your workouts that the kids don't know that they're being talked to about culture, mm -hmm. uh, rather than a sit down lecture and that type of thing. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, we've done, you know, in summer camp and stuff like that is, is having a, a coach, um, either on staff or, um, from, a from another, you know, sport within the school kind of share, you know, their experience or, or a word that means something to them, um, and, and kind of get them to hear like kind of co what coach Keen said, getting different voices to kind of echo your same, um, your same messages. Um, and we've done that through, you know, team dinners and stuff like that and kind of weave things in in that regard. Um, but I think there definitely, you know, is a need for it maybe that wasn't thought of, you know, similar to the culture conversation that wasn't thought of 10 years ago or, or 20 years ago within, you know, the coaching profession. Um, you know, I, I remember, you know, talking to a, a buddy who coached and the statement was, well, this group, you know, there's just not a lot of good leaders within our, you know, our program. Our, these kids aren't good leaders. And I'm like, I get that, but what are you doing to try to develop good leaders? Right. Um, right. So, you know, we've developed a leadership council over the years and, you know, this has certainly looked different this year. Um, but I think, you know, empowering some of those kids to know that they can do it um, and being intentional about that type of thing on uh, giving them, this is your role in today's, you know, workout. This is your role after practice today. And then kind of getting, giving them guidance to do it because I, I think, people are scared to put themselves out there, right. As a leader, you know, as a student and a, as an athlete within a team. So um, I think there's gotta be a proper balance of, you know, kind of weaving it in, but also being intentional, um, you know, and maybe, the, maybe the best way to do it is through those small groups like coach Keen, you know, talked about, um, you know, with, the, with the words and naming what you want the program to be about. So um, I think different things like that, you have to be, you know, 
different in the way you communicate, but also different in the way you kind of weave in that, that culture and that, you know, accountability stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, coach Keen, you know, in, in your environment, how do, how do you answer that? How do you, you know, what do you think is the right amount of, of content uh, for leadership or for culture development? Well, I think from a, from a culture standpoint, uh, I'm constantly talking about the things that are important. So I, I would just use this as a small example. Uh, post-practice or pre-practice, I'm going to have a message for, for our players, right? And part of that is going to be schedule moving forward. Part of that is going to be my feeling about something that happened in practice, positive or negative, and always try and bring it back to some positive. I'm an offensive guy, so every defensive player has played for me probably say practice ended on a sound note if the defense won, right? I, try, I think I'm better at that now. Uh, but, but that's certainly an aspect of it. And I think the last part is, I'm always going to have in mind parts of our culture and I'm going to address part of that culture, whether it be something that dealt with toughness from that practice, whether, you know, maybe it was the weather or whatever it was, or, you know, positive mental attitude, how somebody dealt with the situation during practice and kind of bring it back to our culture, Um, you know, or talk about the process of what we're doing that week, right? What, what, what do we do on a Tuesday uh, in the right way to help us uh, be successful come game day. So I think it's important to have little tidbits of, of your culture that you're addressing every day. It's not, it doesn't have to be a state of the union uh, for your program uh, to be able to, you know, address those, those issues. I think you can do it on a daily basis with your entire team. Yeah. I think you guys are both echoing that similar message of, of, of being consistent with it, weaving it in and, and, you know, it doesn't have to be a production. Uh, so I, I, that makes a ton of sense. Coach Keen, you know, um, we're I, well, both of you guys. We're we're a little over an hour, and we've got a couple of good questions left. And and I like to continue. And and uh, this one is, um, uh, you know, coaches. We often we talk about there's no such thing as failure. And you guys have talked about, you know, Coach Keen, you were talking about flushing it and moving on. And you know, when we don't succeed or when we have a difficulty, you lose a game or you fail in a play or whatever the case is, you've got to got to understand that that's an opportunity to learn and grow. Right? That's what we talk about as coaches. Uh, but, but let me, let me, let's, let's make it personal. So how is a failure, uh, or a so-called failure in your world, coach Keen, how did that set you up for later success on a personal level? Do you have, like, do you have a favorite failure, uh, of yours? <laughs> There's so many to choose from. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know if I have a specific moment of failure, like, you know, my, my time at Illinois College, again, I was a 30-year-old head coach. I made a lot of mistakes uh, as a head coach. Now, I would hope that the players that were there would still have the feeling that I poured my heart and soul into what we were doing there and that ultimately the relationships that we developed in that program were the most important part, right? So, whether we finished four and six didn't matter as much as, as the type of relationship you have with your, with your teammates. We all know it's more fun to win games, right? So um, I feel like I've become a, a better football coach because of that experience uh, in a lot of different ways. I don't know if there's a specific moment. The other thing that I would point to, because I've had an opportunity to work at a lot of different levels, the staff size that I've been able to work with has been, has been varied at each place, right? And so um, the situation that you're in is going to be very different when you're trying to say coordinate an offense or a defense uh, and, and communicate with coaches and get everybody on the same page. And um, now I would just point to an experience at Eastern Michigan, you know, having to coordinate an offense the last three years with a, a larger staff than maybe I was used to at Minnesota State or at Nebraska Omaha or at Illinois College or at Washington University. And um, you know, to be able to stick to my guns as a coach on things that I believed in and not not be pulled away from it because there's a lot of uh, different ideas in the room, right? Because the larger the staff you have, the more ideas you have kind of coming together and, and people get pretty strong-willed. And when you're coordinating in a situation like that, you have to, you have to make sure that you, you know what's important to you, what you want that, that offense or that defense to look like and, and kind of go from there. And I can't say I was perfect uh, at all times that I learned from a lot of mistakes the last three years in that situation that hopefully I'm, I'm a much better football coach because of that experience now. I'd like to ask this uh, of you, Aaron, as well. You know, um, it's, it's often said that coaches are, are, are cre creatures of habit, you know, and routine, it becomes uh, such a big deal. And sometimes we get lost in it, right? You know, it just, 
um, you know, it just become the, the routine becomes uh, the work and, and not necessarily being the most effective within the work. Right. And so, but after working with you at a, at a couple different places and over time and knowing you for a long time, that, that is not something I've ever really uh, thought of with you. You've always been able to, to stay focused, to stay, you know, stay in the moment with what's most important. And so, you know, what, what makes that happen for you or how do you keep yourself properly prioritized and so efficient? Well, I think you use the word prioritize. That's the most important thing. I know what is priority and get that work done, right? I mean, I, I'm a big believer in creating a list of things that you need to, to get done that day and making sure that you're, you're striking that list off and, and making sure you're getting those tasks done uh, before you move on to other things. But I will also say that, like, I've never looked at what I do as a college football coach as a job. It's pretty fun for me, right? And so I enjoy going to work at six in the morning and being able to watch, you know, a little bit of tape on, on a team that maybe I wanted to study before we get into a staff meeting and be able to bring a new idea to it or, you know, break down a certain formation or down in distance before the rest of the coaches get there and, and be able to bring those new ideas to it. I mean, I, I'm a football junkie. So that part of it, I, I do enjoy um, as a go to it. Then I think there's also, you know, you've got to have some semblance of balance in your life as well. Right. I'm, I'm I'll go to work early, but I'm going to make sure that I've got time to get away from it. Uh, as you know, Brad, back before I could, hobble around the office. We used to work out quite a bit at, at, at noontime. And, and that was my escape from what we were yeah. doing with, with our morning review of film and, and practice planning. I mean, there's only so much scripting you can do before you go, go crazy. And yeah. so to get out of the office a little bit, I think is pretty important in being able to help you prioritize what's truly important to get done uh, once you get back to it. I think, I think you may have already just said it, but I'll ask it anyway. I mean, you know, when it isn't going well, when you are overwhelmed or you've lost your focus, even for moments, uh, you know, what do you do? What do you, how do you handle that? Yeah, I, I think having time away from the office is pretty important. Um, and so, you know, it, I think I probably learned this from Pat Burns at, at Nebraska Omaha. You know, there's, there, there's a specific time during the day where you got to get out of the office, right? Go work out or go grab lunch offsite or whatever you're going to do to get away from it. Now, I, I tend to believe that being able to work out at that time, and I don't always do it, right? I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm at fault as well. Like I don't step away all the time. Um, but I think it's pretty, pretty important to take that time for yourself and get away from, you know, the grind of, of working and refresh your mind and, and come back re-energized and, and get after it. So I've got a couple of questions kind of left and, and really actually I only, I've kind of won. And then, and then I've got uh, an opportunity for the two of you, but I, coach Rennie, you know, um, this may be even a touch of a recap, but I like some of the stuff that you talked about at the very beginning about, you know, your players knowing, you know, what, what it means to be a part of your program. And they're trying to live that, you know, outside of the program, not just inside of it, but you know, what, what, what do you think you're doing right now that's making the biggest impact on your team's culture? I think just that mate, like the ability to try to continue to connect um, and getting kids to know that, that we care about them, you know, in, in a variety of ways, right? Obviously we care about them as, as athletes and we want them to be successful and we're on them about, Hey, how did you get your workout in today based on, you know, we're virtual or whatever that might look like. Um, and I think just being that staff and that, um, that, that person that's outside of their family, that's, that's showing them that we care about them and that we want them to be successful. Um, but also holding them accountable to, to the standards that we have of the program. Um, I think kids need to feel that sense of belonging and, you know, sense of purpose that I think that's the biggest thing that, that we're trying to do and um, get the kids to realize they're a part of something, you know, more than just themselves and that we're depending on them, you know, just as much as they're depending on, you know, playing sports and stuff like that. Yeah, that's uh that's good. You know, uh, what I'd like to what I'd like to do here, kind of at, at the back end of this, is give you an opportunity, Coach Rennie, to to ask Coach Keen a question. You know, flip the flip the script a little bit. You know, here's someone that, um, you know, to a certain extent, is you viewed him, you know, as a coach, and then as maybe as a, as a mentor a little bit, and now walking in, you guys are you know walking in the same tracks in a lot of in a lot of days. You know, what what's what's something that that you'd like to ask Coach Keen? Oh, I'm sure there's a a, a lot of them, um, but. Uh... 
I, you know, I was thinking about what I wanted to ask Coach Keen. Um, you know, you posted a picture of you guys working out uh, on a, I don't know what day it was. I mean, I think we always had to do it on a Friday in, in beautiful England field there in Jacksonville. Um, and, you know, the, the ever, the ever common Jacksonville, Illinois college uh, buddies just start commenting, you know, on the pair. I remember the, you know, those types of things. Uh, and uh, someone brought up the find the pony story. Um, and, uh, you know, a guy that worked for you and, and played for you, Jimmy Cowgill, uh, texted me and he said, what, what is that story? So I had to remind him, um, and, and it's funny to hear you talk about positive mental attitude because there was a day, Brad, in I think 2003, uh, where it was about 115 degrees out, um, every, every Big Ten school canceled practice because it was too hot, um, you know, we, we had our practice in the morning and, you know, Jacksonville gets hot, man. I'm telling you. And it was, uh, it was a cooker that day. And I think coach realized that our, our dynamic warm up with coach Ryan telling everybody to get 40 reps on their, their, their high knees and their butt kickers. We didn't have great energy. Um, so coach Keen shared a story about positive mental attitude of two, two twin brothers. So um, I want to know, you know, you and your twin, which one were you? I was the one digging in there, finding the pony. Yeah, right. I don't believe it. I assure it. you. <laughs> I love that story. And, you know, I remember that day, um, and it was hot. And I think maybe it was the day after we'd broken camp, and maybe people were out just a little bit late that Certainly night. Before. Not. Certainly not. We had to kind of set the tone with a little bit more um, toughness in practice and grind it a little bit. But, uh I do remember that story and it's one I learned from Larry Kimbaum and I, I continue to tell, you know, I've got to kind of cycle it through teams that, that I'm a part of every four years. So you don't use it too much, but uh, <laughs> I, I love it because I think it's a great example of, uh, of what positive mental attitude is all about and, and do it in a funny way that uh, guys can relate to. And then, you know, I, I remember that specific situation you know, there were a lot of down faces until we kind of got going with the story and then you start laughing a little bit and having fun. And, and we ended up finishing practice in a good way. So it can be pretty powerful. And your dad, my offensive line coach sold it too. He's like, yeah, that was about, that was about Aaron, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the truth, the truth, uh, and maybe, you know, this as a player or not, I don't know, but you know, he, he probably came from his pool Coach, Coach Keen came from his pool just right down the street and was headed right back there right after practice. You know, he needs to have his time away, and it was going to be in the nice, cool pool in his backyard. Nice lemonade. He was ready to go. Yeah, right, right. So, Coach Coach Keen, I, I, I'd love to know if you've got a question for Coach Hereni. Let's put it back on him. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of thought about some questions uh, beforehand. A lot of them dealt with, you know, what you're doing right now to keep your players engaged. And you talked a lot about that. So I, I think I'd probably move on to, to something um, maybe a little bit more personal and, and be able to ask you, um, you know, as a former player, uh, somebody who went through three years of playing for me and the things that, that we were able to stress in the program and that you were a part of for those years, tell your old coach here, is there something in that experience that you would like to see emphasized in the future in any program that, uh, you know, that I'm still coaching here? Um, yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, I think that the thing besides the relationship thing that was, you know, influenced so much and, um, I, you know, I, I think your staff there was really, really great, a perfect combination of um, you know, guys that were there, but also bringing in some, some newer people. And, um, you know, your dad's a phenomenal coach and I love playing for him. Um, but beyond that, I think just, you know, before my freshman year, I didn't feel like there was a ton of overall program plan. Um, and I really felt when you came in that there was a vision that you had for our program and, you were going to work tirelessly to get us to where we needed to be. Um, and, you know, you, you talked, Brad, about like people knowing what somebody's genuine, um, you know, probably because he was yelling at me to do up downs better. Um, and I played offensive line, so I'm not the greatest uh, uh, up downer that ever walked the earth. Um, but you saw the passion um, for 
for coaching, but the passion that, you know, he knew that this was going to be the right way for us to get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, and for us to be bought in and, and, you know, that was his team period. Um, and, uh, that stuck out to me too. Um, you know, going to, going to battle and, and practice every day with the same group of guys and, you know, knowing a coach is pulling for you um, and, and believing that, you know, you're going the right direction. Um, because I mean, my first three games at Illinois college, I started as a freshman, we were three and oh, and I was like, man, college football is easy. This is easy. Um, and then, you know, we lost the next seven games, but um, it, uh, you know, when you took over my sophomore year, yeah, I, I think that, that, great structure that you provided for, for all of us, but just, you know, the passion that you, you know, you brought to the table that meant something to me. So, um, and I'm sure, you know, our teammates would, would echo that. One of the, one of the words that, that came into my head listening to you guys both as we've been talking is, is the word trust. And, um, you know, and we maybe didn't necessarily say that, but I felt like we kept finding different ways to talk about how that is either earned you know, or shared or, or how it impacts the group, you know, and, and when you're, when you are, uh, you know, doing, when you're doing the things that you're doing and you are building uh, that connection and you're being genuine and, you know, you're the person that you, you say that you are consistently, right. Uh, trust, uh, trust happens, you know, and trust, you know, it's, 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 it's not something that you can, you can't just expect it. Right. Like I can't just walk into a room and, and, and if I have coach in front of my name, just expect guys to trust what I'm doing. I've got to earn that. And, and you guys have talked about a multitude of ways in which you do that on a daily basis, intentionally, uh, with purpose. And, uh, you know, and so I I mean, I, I, I sit here from my vantage point and, and uh, you know, I've got two two boys play football and they both they both thrive playing for you two guys. So. You know, I, I, I appreciate you taking the time tonight, you know, and, and spending it with us and all those that are, that are paying attention. And I think that, uh, you know, if, if I was listening and, and I came to this with the purpose of trying to gain something, there's, there's two things that come from this, you know, uh, confirmation, right? Like there's coaches listening to what you're doing and they're nodding saying, I'm doing that, you know, and that's confirmation that they're on the right track. That's, that's, that's an important thing to have, right? Especially if you are that 30 year old head coach or first time head coach, and you're trying to figure it out, you know, hearing somebody do what they're, what they, what they've done and how they've done it and confirming that you're on the right track. That's a big thing because there is, you know, uh, there's so many ways to do what we do, you know, and then, and then I think too, there's, there's, you guys, you guys have given a ton of ideas on, on how to go about, um, you know, developing the, not just culture, but strong culture and, and pillars within it that people can lean on. You know, I've, I, I've thought of this as a coach many times, like when your program's in the right place, it's that brick wall at the end of a swimming pool, right? And when the swimmer is going full bore against it, he knows where it's at or she knows where it's at and they trust it, right? And so when they flip and turn and push, that brick wall doesn't move and they go in the direction they need to go as quickly as they possibly can. And, and the more they trust that, the closer they get to it before reverse in direction, and the more power that they push into it, something happens in their favor with that. And, and your programs with, with how you've described it and, and what you're building is developing that, that wall, that constant wall for them, that piece of support that they can count on and they can, they can propel themselves in great direction and, and, and velocity with, with it. So I tip my cap to you, to you both. Uh, I thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I imagine that uh, you might get some follow-up questions and people bugging you about knowing more. And, and that would be, that would be, that'd be fine by me. Cause I think that uh, you've earned that attention tonight. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll wrap it up. You know, I, I, again, I appreciate the time for you two gentlemen, those that have paid attention and listened to, to what we're doing and, you know, um, we'll, we'll, we're going to continue to do these on a monthly basis. And so we'll put out the information through our channels on, on what that next conversation was going to be, uh, what it will be. And, and, and it will be that it's going to be a conversation that that winds and goes and, and, and takes us to a place where we can confirm that we're doing the right things and, and give us some ideas along the way. So um, anything to close from you two guys? I would say just thank you, Brad, for for doing this. This has been fun for me. And uh, Joe, it's great to to see you and connect and, and look forward to staying in touch. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I echo that. You know, I got the same thing out of it, Brad, is, uh, you know, I hear coach talk and, um, 
you know, we do some of the similar things, but also gives me some ideas where, you know, we continue to grow and, and get better. So um, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk with, with Coach Keen. You know, I learned a lot from him, but, you know, it's cool to be in, you know, colleagues with him now, um, so to speak. So it's a, it's a neat deal. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening. Stay warm and uh, let's do a little sun dance. Let's get Absolutely. this snow out of here. Sure. Get it out of here. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. You all have a wonderful evening and we'll uh, we'll sign her off.